I've had the Harvey G700 dust collector in my shop for a little over a year, and it's cost me time on every single project. I don't mean to belabor the point, but this is what I'm talking about. I ran these four maple boards and those over there, and my dust bin alarm went off. It's saying it's already full. There's a good four, six inches of space there in the big chip bin. And then this bin over here for the fine dust is only half full and it already shut off on me saying that it needs to be empty. So I have to do this constantly while I'm milling lumber and it just really cuts into the productivity of the shop. For a little extra fun, the filters were also clogged. So what should have just been a simple bag change ended up taking about 20 minutes before I was back up and running. I realized that I could not keep wasting this much time on my needy dust collector. So I started talking with Oneida and together we developed a plan for the optimum dust collection solution for my shop. Before my new systems from Oneida arrived, I went ahead and removed my old dust collectors along with all of the old ducting. All right, the freight truck just rolled out of the driveway and left me with all of these beautiful boxes. Oneida sent out their Dust Gorilla Pro for the main area of the shop and a little something extra just for the CNC. I'm so excited. All of the boxes that Oneida shipped are clearly labeled and everything is really well packaged to keep the items from being damaged during transit. I don't know about you, but isn't it basically required to be a goof when you're unboxing tools with your kid? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's in the rule book somewhere. Right. I think owner's manual is going to be important. I know we've all been there before when it comes to items that require a little bit of assembly. Half the time, you're wondering if the instructions were written by somebody who even knows what the heck it is that you're putting together. And the other half of the time, you're thinking, there is no way that's going to last. Well, I'll put your mind at ease for this one at least. I found the instructions really easy to follow, and I feel like all the materials used for the units are going to last a lifetime. There's no, uh, yeah, that piece of plastic, it ain't making it. These are all really well constructed. All right, so I knew things were going to be tight space-wise. I can lift the motor up into place in top of the dust collector, but the problem is getting the impeller down inside of that upper piece. I'm gonna deviate from the instructions. I'm going to modify the base so that way I can lower the entire assembly. Y'all wish me luck. With the leg extensions back off of the stand, I can easily attach the fan housing and I'll have just enough clearance above the unit to set the motor assembly in place. Now, I just have to wait until my dad comes over for dinner so I can surprise him with a fun little father-son shop project. Thanks, Dad. Are your fingers clear? It's up. Getting the motor in place is definitely not something I would recommend trying by yourself. It's not terribly heavy for two people to lift, but even so, it's still fairly cumbersome just due to the weight and size of the item. All right, with things back in position, we move on to getting the filter stack attached. You can probably tell that this is a fairly straightforward unit to assemble. Aside from the motor assembly, there isn't anything that's terribly heavy, and with a second set of hands, the system can be set up in about half a day. Let's talk about some of the stats between the Harvey G700 and this new unit from Oneida. Once you hook it up to some ducting, for the Harvey, the maximum airflow is 700 CFM, and for the Oneida, it's close to 1400 CFM. The static pressure on both of these units is pretty good. It's 18 and a half inches of water for the Harvey, and it's 23 inches of water on the Oneida, so they're again higher overall. So this is a 55 gallon dust barrel. The Harvey held 32 gallons, but if you remember, it was never completely full before it required me to empty it. So this is a huge upgrade for the productivity in my shop. So the Dust Gorilla Pro right behind me that I just finished setting up is providing dust collection for the main area of my shop. So it's hooked up to nine different tools. I've got two band saws, the table saw, the joiner, the drum sander, my planer, my miter saw, and my two radial arm saws. Oneida recommended that I have a dedicated unit here for the CNC because the ducting run from the Dust Gorilla Pro all the way over here would be just a bit too long for optimal performance. So I'm getting rid of a 1200 CFM dust right that was doing its best but just 
really wasn't cutting it, and I'm upgrading to the Oneida Supercell. The Supercell isn't your standard dust collector. Instead of the more traditional impeller style setup, this system uses a handful of high performance fan motors to provide the vacuum. What this does is provide a ton of static pressure to pull air through the long run of flexible hose at the CNC, and it provides excellent dust collection for the tool. If you thought the Dusk Gorilla Pro looked easy to assemble, the Supercell is even easier. Not only is it smaller and lighter, but it also simply has fewer parts to deal with. Once the mounting bracket and cyclone are set up, really all that's left is to put the filter in place, pop on the motor assembly, and hook up the dust bin. The Supercell has a really neat automatic bag holding system. It uses negative pressure from the motor head to fully open the bag inside the bin. To make that happen, you install this fitting in the bottom of the bin and connect a hose to it that's also connected to the top of the cyclone. The red light sitting on top of the dust bin at the moment is part of the dust century bin level indicator. There's one of these on the Dust Gorilla Pro as well, and what this fancy contraption does is light up when the bin is to a level that you determine while you're setting up the indicator. No more annoying alarm that won't shut up until you turn off the machine and empty the bin, and no more automatically shutting down your dust collector. It's just a nice friendly heads up that says, hey, it's time to empty the dust bin. With my old dust collector, surfacing the spoil board of my CNC used to leave the shop in a cloud of dust, but with a supercell, there's virtually no dust left behind. Even though the CFM is lower on the supercell than the dust right, about 450 CFM versus 1200 CFM, the static pressure of the supercell is an incredible 97.8 inches of water, which is a big reason why Oneida spec'd this system for my CNC. I know we started out this video really just discussing why I was replacing my Harvey G700, but what I've ended up doing by bringing the Oneida Dust Gorilla Pro and Supercell into the shop is not just replace that G700, but I've also replaced two 1200 CFM dust right dust collectors. One was for my CNC, the other was for the band saws, and a pretty beefy shop vac that I was using for dust collection at the miter saw, my oscillating spindle sander, and my router table. In my next video on this topic, I'm going to be discussing the ducting layout in my shop, and why that's so important, and how the folks over at Oneida set everything up for optimal performance for my Dust Gorilla Pro and the Supercell.